Hello, uh, in this lecture we will continue our discussion on uh, empirical evaluation. So in the last lecture we stopped at uh, the usage of Amdahl's law. So we will continue from there. So once we understand uh, the, the implications of Amdahl's law, so the next question comes is how to evaluate and what exactly to evaluate, right? So as I mentioned in the last lecture, let's say we want to compare two different processors from two uh, different uh, commercial uh, companies. So we, we should, before evaluating, we should ask the following question. So what, what are the programs that we should use to evaluate the processors, right? So typically it should be the program that we care, the programs that we run on, uh, on, on a daily basis, right? Then uh, the question is how many such programs, right? And then, uh, then what, what if you want to build a new processor or a small delta idea on top of a processor, castles, memory or whatever, how will you evaluate them? Will you go for building a chip or will you talk to the commercial companies or what exactly is the procedure? So the first uh, thing that we, we should understand is when we evaluate a, a particular processor, so there are certain benchmarks where benchmarks are nothing but some applications. And uh, so these are predefined set of benchmarks which are uh, you know, representative of various application domains. So one of uh, famous benchmark in the community is uh, SPEC uh, CPU 2017 benchmark, which kind of stresses your processor and memory subsystem. Okay, so if you want to do research on computer architecture and you want to improve the performance of your processor memory or caches, then this is the right benchmark to use and evaluate your ideas. Or if you want to uh, compare the performance of two commercial machines which are already available in the market, you can just uh, look at uh, their spec score uh, and then how do they perform uh, in, in with respect to the spec uh, performance, okay? So it comes uh, in two uh, avatars. One is the spec speed, which is the latency uh, uh, sensitive kind of uh, metric. It's actually uh, used for comparing time uh, to complete single task. Okay. The second is actually spec rate, which is a throughput or bandwidth uh, metric. So depending on what you want, you can actually uh, use uh, the benchmarks accordingly. There are benchmarks for, for other kind of systems. So for example, uh, what if you want to understand the microarchitecture behavior of a cloud system? Or, so there, um, you won't be stressing only your processor or memory, right? So it, it will interact with the entire system stack with the various cloud services that you can think of. And uh, so your benchmarks should kind of, you know, uh, should be the representative of all the services that uh, the modern cloud service provider provide, right? So cloud suite is one of the benchmarks that you can refer and see uh, the kind of benchmarks or the applications that this benchmark provides. What if you want to run parallel programs or multi-threaded programs where, where, you know, instead of a single task running on a single core or a single processor, what if you have a multi-threaded code where you have multiple threads of a single process solving a task and which are scheduled in different cores, right? So Parsec is one of the benchmark suite for that. So if you are evaluating performance of your parallel programs, then this is the benchmark suite that you should go for. Similarly, in the in the world of mobiles, right, where, where uh, you are dealing with a completely new set of applications, which is different from your laptop, desktop, or servers, uh, there, there are benchmarks which are like still evolving, but, but you can look at, uh, let's say, mobile bench, there's something called a geek bench uh, that you can refer. So all, all the latest smartphones, they actually uh, evaluate based on some of the uh, benchmarks that we have uh, just discussed, mobile bench or geek bench or uh, Antutu, there's another benchmark called Antutu. So based on the score, uh, you, your uh, final uh, you know, performance will be evaluated across the smartphones. There are many other uh, specific uh, benchmarks which are application specific. Uh, it can be dealing with the graph processing because graph analytics is kind of uh, uh, nowadays everywhere. Uh, there, there is uh, 
new relatively new uh, benchmark called mlpuff which which deals with uh, machine learning uh, interference uh, both both uh, you know the learning uh, time and and uh, the prediction time right so so these are the kind of benchmarks that you should use um, depending on what exactly is your uh, application domain so the punchline here is no matter what you do you should be clear about your application domain right because the first first thing uh, in, in your evaluation is what are the benchmarks what are the application what is the domain that you want to improve on right is it generic or is it specific is it specific to mobiles is it specific to servers is it specific to let's say, one class of um, applications right so these are the questions that you should ask so some of the pitfalls that 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 are kind of obvious uh, that there is no single benchmark that represents almost everything in this world okay for example if you want to uh, you know understand or evaluate applications which are io bound which which performs more input output activity right then the spec 2017 benchmark sheet that we discussed is kind of useless because it don't uh, go to io it, it's a benchmark suite which stresses your processor and memory not not the io right? another issue that usually comes with all these benchmark suites is as we move along the benchmarks will become old because new set of applications are coming almost every month and 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 uh, so to keep track of the recent changes in benchmarks domains application domains uh, you need you need to refresh uh, all these benchmarks periodically for for example spec cpu was uh, it, it's actually uh, there in the community from la last uh, 20 30 years and before 2017 the previous avatar was spec cpu 2006 which was like uh, 14 15 years old okay so there are other ways to uh, look at or evaluate uh, your performance or your system performance or your application performance is to have some non benchmarks so your non benchmark can be a small application kernel don't get confused with this os kernel so this is application kernel which deals with a small code fragment okay so you can assume if your program has thousands of lines of code you extract one small for loop one small function and try to understand where exactly are the bottleneck whether it's latency sensitive or bandwidth sensitive what can be done at the caches processor memory registers whatever right so that is one way you can also come up with a synthetic benchmark which is actually not part of any real program and you can create that benchmark right artificially so let's say if you want to understand the behavior of a particular uh, microarchitecture unit and there is no benchmark suite which kind of stresses that particular microarchitecture unit so you can create a benchmark right so these are uh, some of the ways uh, that that folks kind of try to evaluate some of the new microarchitecture units for which the benchmarks don't stress that much okay and so so the combination of this uh, kernels and then and, and, uh, the synthetic benchmarks can actually create uh, a micro benchmarks with okay it, it may not be you know as uh, significant as spec or let's say cloud or whatever cloud suite but but it is still good enough to uh, start your evaluation so at this moment we have uh, a set of benchmarks that we want to evaluate on so we are clear about that so now how will you evaluate let's say you you come up with a new idea uh, to improve your process performance right so then you have to create a chip and uh, that will cost you two uh, millions and billions depending on uh, you know uh, what kind of facilities you have and so what's the other way the other way is world of simulators okay so th this simulators are software simulators so they are not your uh, you know hardware uh, description language based simulators or something like that what we are dealing with uh, this particular slide is we are talking about softwares that can mimic the behavior of a hardware right so the soft the simulators can be of various kinds so one is the functional simulator where it doesn't care about the performance part but it makes sure that uh 
the different units or micro architecture units are actually functionally correct. They are doing what they are supposed to do. Right? Then uh, comes the performance driven simulator. So one of them uh, we will use uh, through this course. You can look at this GitHub link where, you know, we kind of create a trace of instructions from uh, different benchmarks and we feed those instructions into the simulator. The simulator will be simulating processor, memory, caches, whatever that we'll see in the uh, next few months and try to provide a cycle accurate uh, model so that finally we'll be able to get our IPC or uh, CPU cycle time, right? So that we can compare the speed up at the end of the day. There are simulators which are execution driven where you don't feed the trace. Instead, you provide a binary of a application and these are kind of full system simulators. They can simulate even the system stack, OS and other things along with your micro architecture. So, so go and look at uh, the different simulators which can perform uh, varieties of uh, uh, simulations. And uh, at the end of the day, the you, you should not feel like computer architecture is actually coding in assembly language. No, computer architecture will be using the simulators or tools and uh, there will be some more tools that we'll be discussing in future. And, um, you know, evaluating them iteratively over a set of benchmarks suite for a given idea. So uh, let's continue our uh, evaluation process. So we have picked a benchmark suite. We have measured the IPC uh, or the instruction for cycles. Now, now, we need to decide which particular processor or which particular idea is better, right? So we need to summarize our evaluation. So for example, if you are uh, interested in improving the performance or if you are dealing with comparing performance of two processor, so you run this spec benchmarks and you found out the IPC for each benchmark. Now you need to find one particular number that will tell you, okay, this particular processor is better than processor B. Let's say processor A is better than processor B, right? So when it comes to summarizing uh, the performance numbers or any numbers, right? So there are various kinds of things that you can do. So you can use arithmetic mean, geometric mean, or the harmonic mean. Uh, I don't think uh, I, I should explain what uh, these means uh, mean. Uh, this is kind of pretty high school uh, uh, stuff. So let, let's look at what happens if, if we use uh, the various kinds of means and uh, all, these are basically averaging out uh, your performance numbers, right? So the question is which one to choose. So let's let's take an example where we have three machines, okay, Intel, ABM and AMD. And let's say there are three applications. So these are part of one of your benchmark suite, let's say, okay. And uh, these are the execution time for example, okay? So what is happening is, uh, or, or uh, you can say these are the, uh, yeah, these are the execution time or the cycle time. Or the other way to look at the following is, let's say this is, uh, th these numbers are actually uh, your instruction per cycle, right? Uh, the reciprocal of CPI, right? So higher the better in IPC. So for example, if, if I'm taking application one, uh, A and D is actually doing good. Okay, so, so if we look at these numbers and try to ask this question, like which machine is performing better over Intel? So over Intel meaning we have to normalize our performance numbers compared to Intel. Okay, so when I say normalize, that means what if I consider the value of this particular application as one, uh, then what will be the value of in D machine and ABM machine? Will it be 1.x? What is that x? Okay, will it be 2x, 3x, 10x, whatever, right? So basically we are dividing uh, that IPC of one of these machines on the right hand side with Intel, okay? So so this are, these, are, these are the normalized ratios. So if you look at the previous slide, right? So the basic value was uh, from Intel was 10. ABM provides IPC of 20, AND provides IPC of 30, right? So that means this, this is 2X better, this is 3X better, and similarly for other two applications. So let's say these are the ratios, right? So once we have these ratios, now we need to average it out. Right, and now the question comes like whether to use arithmetic mean, geometric mean, or the harmonic mean. Right, so 
if we look at uh, arithmetic mean it says a and d is better okay if we look at uh, geometric mean it says abm is better and if we take uh, harmonic mean again it says abm is better so which one to go for and before that if we look at why arithmetic mean is kind of saying a and d is better it's because one of the application is showing a big jump this is kind of three times uh, compared to the Intel machine and this is contributing significantly to the overall average right? but here geometric mean is kind of balancing out uh, all the uh, outliers either high improvement or uh, high degradation and harmonic mean is more uh, restrictive in that way right so if you look at, uh, at at this particular slide it's not clear which one should we go for usually you should go for geometric mean and uh, harmonic mean okay because it kind of balances out all, all your outliers and uh, one of the outliers can't you know uh, play a big role in defining your final average ratio okay so uh, if we try to understand why not arithmetic mean on, on the normalized ratios so this is another example so let's say there are two machines x and y and there are two applications one and two for one application application one the y machine is 100 times faster for application two the x machine is 100 times faster right so this is the ratio right so now if, if you take the arithmetic mean right you, you normalize let's say x uh, you, you kind of find out the normalized value of y over x right so what if the value of x is 1 like all the applications have uh, value 1 then what will be the corresponding uh, values here right and we, we get that like y is kind of 50.05 times faster than x right so there's that pretty much. what if we do the other way around so let's assume that the baseline is y and we are trying to find out the improvement over y right so in this case what is happening is again the x is kind of 50.05 times better than y so then which one is better whether it's uh, x or it's y right so if you take arithmetic mean uh, you you will end up going nowhere because it will say that yeah both y and x are faster than x and y right but if you take the geometric mean as you can see uh, uh, the final conclusion will be different so uh, with that i'll stop here thank you